I feel like I haven't posted in a video in a while, but it, it certainly hasn't been that long. Oh my. Hey, so I decided to hit that upload button again, and we have some nice progress to show you. After I uploaded that video, I got a DM from Sin Ender, and he said, let me know if you want any help developing the housing remake. Heck yeah, this is my busy week for me for school, so I could use the help. Besides, I'm sure he'll only work on a few things, maybe help save some time, give some next suggestions, and maybe improve my code slightly. Nope, just throw everything in the trash and recode practically everything. Holy, the way I managed actions, gone. The way I handled houses, gone. And while he's at it, he didn't want to do too much. So let's just add the cancel action, random action, transition to slime world manager, make everything save, functions, NPCs, a to-do list, which I didn't even see, that's my bad. Like, just code everything while you're at it, like, holy. First off, let's talk about NPCs, because what's a Minecraft server without some good old soulless AI to talk to, right? Wait, these guys are just standing around, for the moment, judging your lack of progress, but in reality, they're here to help. You can interact with them to, you know, run actions, classic NPC things, but as for additions, the entire reason I started this project, you can now change the NPC's entity type to mobs like a creeper, a ghast, a wither, or maybe even a dolphin. Uh... By default, NPCs have names, like Baldrick here, so I decided to do something similar on the version 2 of housing. So you can get Connor Linfa, the Cookie Monster, Loading, Alex, Baldrick, Bend Over, as well as Diddy. As for new actions, I can finally show you the push action from the last episode. We also have the random action, which will randomly execute one of the actions inside of it. RNG houses are also about to go crazy with this one. And here's the list of the rest of the new actions added in the, to this update. And speaking of trigger function, it's a perfect transition onto the Slime World Manager. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold up, Alex. I could take it from here. Hey, I'm Sinender, a professional Java developer. I like Alex. You might know me from events that Alex and I have worked together. Or maybe from High Sensuals, Redstone Studios, or a few other places. I'm the guy behind the scenes working on cool stuff that doesn't always make it into the final cut. And that's perfectly fine with me. In case it wasn't obvious, I get a kick out of fixing Alex's skill issues. The first big challenge I tackled was figuring an efficient way to save and store houses and all the data that comes with them. If you're a developer, you probably know where this is going. I use Slimeboard. Protocol? Tool? Format? Who knows? This helps me save worlds in a singular file rather than 500 files that Minecraft uses. This makes it a lot easier so that in the future, if we choose to save everything in a database, it's just an easy transition. After all, it's just a JSON file and a slime road file. Nothing too crazy. In all seriousness, though, I really hope with our combined efforts and community feedback, we'll be able to create something everyone loves. Also, go easy on me and Coolio here. This is the first time I made a video like this. After all, I'm just a professional Java developer, not a video editor. Now back to your regular scheduled program. Now, while he was at it with his minor changes, yeah, sure, buddy, he also made everything save. Now, your twerk event actions will say even if there's a server restart or a crash. So let's talk about functions for a second. And I don't mean the math kind, thank God, but the kind where you can preset actions to trigger both automatically using automatic execution or when told to. And they are in housing too, which is super exciting as it's a huge step for the progress. I mean, functions are big. If you have a house, you probably use functions. So having them added is a pretty good step in my opinion. After the last video, I put out a poll on the community tab where you guys could vote what you wanted to see the most next. There was the option of functions, adding more actions, NPCs, groups and permissions, as well as the housing browser. Now, let's be honest, you guys are going to choose something cool like the functions or NPCs, right? You're probably not going to choose groups or permissions or housing browser. I mean, that's boring. Are you kidding me? Why have all this cool stuff you wanted the housing browser? Okay, maybe it's what you use to join your favorite hallway parkour. But I mean, you had the opportunity to add all this fancy stuff with unique features, but the browser? Okay, so let's make a list of things that normal, boring housing has for us to improve on. Obviously we can edit the house name, but that's very limiting. So I've made it so you can add a longer name as well as descriptions, which people have wanted on the actual housing for a while. While the icons on actual housing has been improved recently, it's still very limiting. You have some of the basic materials and then just wool colors and that's pretty much it. So let's allow you to use any block in the game. Oh, and because this is based off the latest version of Minecraft, it's a lot. But before we end it off here, I have one final thing to show you, and that's player stat. 
We can Dr. Bend over here to go to our click actions and add a changed player stat action. If we go inside, it looks pretty normal, except for the fact that mode and amount or the value is slightly different. If we go inside mode, you would originally know housing has increase, decrease, set, multiply, and divide. You can see here, we have a few more things. We've increased, decreased, set, multiply, and divide just like normal housing, but there's the introduction of mod for modulus, floor for math.floor, as well as rounding a number. Because numbers are not stored in ints or whole numbers, they can actually be stored in decimals as well. Along with that, we have get stat. Now, I don't know what this does. You're gonna have to ask Ender, but we have these here, which are string related options. Stats are now no longer just numbers. They can be strings or text as well. As you can see, we can set our kill stat to, let's just say, hello, and I have a display on the scoreboard, so now when I right-click on bend over, it now says hello. We'll change it to maybe find the length of the string, so we'll set kills to the length of, and then we can just say stat.player slash kills. We can set the kills to the length of kills, and it should be five when we right-click, and it's six because I can't do math. But yeah, so stats have been majorly improved and they're pretty much done. But I mean, people have been asking for more operations, more precise stats, string stats for so long. And the fact that it's now combined into just one thing, I think is amazing, which you guys are going to love so much. I'm really proud of the progress that we've made so far. It's going really well and I can't wait to maybe eventually let you guys create houses with these features. There's actually a few more smaller things, but we can wait for the future episodes for those. Before I end this video off, I want to quickly point out that I've been busy with school recently, and because of that, I've only really worked on housing 2, which means there hasn't been a lot of other housing-related stuff that I've worked on, so there hasn't been really any videos recently. I want to apologize, and I'll hopefully maybe upload more soon, but I honestly just can't promise that. Housing 2 is still in the works. I want to give a shout out to Sin Ender one final time, as well as various cacti for helping me develop the project, and to PGMA and Pixel Bedrock for help playtesting any new builds that we create. Oh yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching.